very much. It's a pleasure to take part in a hybrid event. So I'm here to talk about um, work, about um, well, there were some marked trends that have been sped up by the pandemic. I will share um, some general topics. I don't know if you are a father or a mother. What do you think this father is asking his daughter? To tidy up her room? No. Uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? That's a very usual question and that comes from a three-phase labour paradigm. You get education, then work and then retire. So if you were born at the end of the 70s, well, it's a paradigm in which most of us have uh, been raised. But the paradigm has changed dramatically, as you see at the bottom. Now we will work longer because we will live longer so we'll see a professional career of 40 50 years in different organizations more with more or less activity and we will be learning um, lifelong in a way so which would have to be the question we what three or four dozen things do you want to be when you grow up it's a different question with many uh, consequences. If we start thinking about our labour life, uh, what we should think, whether this is a positive, a negative or a um, neutral thing. Uh, I don't have an answer. I have more questions than answers. Uh, but this has to do with many things, uh, labour law, um, professional career, social security access, pension systems, uh, everything has been sought out for a specific way of working. But today we have a huge diversity of ways of working that are not sufficiently recognised or is enshrined in the um, legislation. So let's talk about talent management. This is just a part, a tiny part of what's going on. Well, first of all, this is uh, terra incognita. We are trying to build a rocket as we fly away. So mm, we don't have um, certain answers. We have to be explorers in this adventure. We know where we come from. The Fordian um, min mindset basically um, scientific organization of labor, we compete for efficiency, we have high transaction costs, we hire the staff and we own them, they are our employees, they do not work for someone else, they um, work for eight hours and in the past um, going to the market to look for labor was uh, time-consuming. That's the old map. What about the new map? Trends, signs. Um, the German speaker has uh, talked about this, about prospects. So the first trend is um, my father had one job. I will have seven jobs in my professional career and my children will have seven jobs at once. This is from Tom Malone, an MIT professor. We need to understand that the seven drops at the same time um, does not replace the other two. The three are valid, but everything is based on the old way of doing things. If you have teenagers at home, probably they are not thinking about one single labour model throughout their lives. The second trend, and this has to do with the digital sphere, digital platforms, you will find global um, here, but not everything is global. Digital platforms organize markets. Uh, Wallapop organizes the second-hand market, Airbnb, the tourism market, and then there are talent platform managers. And they are spectacular managers to organize markets. My father had only one job in his um, professional career. Of course, 
uh, that has changed and if I, now I have seven jobs every year even if I'm a corporation or I'm a talent the market has to be organized efficiently so digital platforms as market organizers will increase I will give you some brief examples the match mode Barcelona platform these are fashion freelancers um, boys one two three Colombian throughout the world basically actors voice actors I have a friend who is registered here she has her own website and she also gets um, assignments through this platform field engineers wherever whenever um, data scientists talking about AI um, the scarce talent that was mentioned by the first speaker can be found on this platform. So the uh, platform economy doesn't mean that everything is Uber. Of course, it has impacts. The fact that you manage talent through algorithms, um, automa automations, um, algorithms. There's an issue of rights. Simona will deal with that. So we've been working on this in the Catalan Charter. It's important to know that the digitalization of the market poses new challenges, but not everything is Uber or global. So it's important to have uh, that or to bear this, it, this in mind. So we need to understand that in the current situation, as Esco Kilby, the sociologist, says, it is now more expensive to internalize than to link a network. So in the past, the transaction cost when I when I, I needed a talent, I had to look for it, hire it, um, train it. But if I need a designer, I don't need to hire that person as um, permanent staff of my organization. So that, that changes the nature of organizations. There's a paper entitled The Nature of Organizations 70 Years Later. This is by Coase, and this has changed because transaction costs have been lowered. Uh, we organize differently because it costs less. So. In the business world, a lot of literature, the end of jobs, the rise of on-demand workers and agile corporations, MIT, um, all pointing uh, in the same direction. A hybrid labor uh, with a mix of in-house and external talent. And here another comic. Meet the rest of the team. Todd's an employee. Sally's a freelancer. Ed is a contractor, Regina is a gig walker, and Benny just does this as a hobby. So the first question from father to daughter has already changed, and the way in which we work for an organization uh, will change too, and organizations have to think about um, accommodating all of this. So 2021, um, labor fragmentation, the um, platform economy and hybrid teams and hybrid talent. So the speed and the, um, and the scale, well, there are some question marks there. I met Erica Tia in London some years ago and she, her position is external workforce management at Novartis. She said 50% in-house and 50% external uh, employees and they look for talent in ex-employees, people who are familiar with the company, with the sector, uh, with the reputation. So the of boarding is very important to keep the link with these people. People who ranked second uh, in the job interview, the silver medalist, so people who were very talented but were not hired. Then external talents with whom we work um, periodically, designers, etc. And this can be done through platforms so that you're connected with a um, nearly universal open ecosystem. So you need to have a strategy because the alternative is to ignore everything, to bury your head in the sun. That's cheap. It will work in the short term, but not very advisable. These American consultant, Paul Festius, 
says not having a talent strategy as we start 2021 is like mixing the internet trend in the 90s or the mobile revolution in 2010s. So the digital is changing the structure and management of um, our labour and of course without people we cannot do anything, we will not have an organisation. What do these companies do? Well, they design a strategy and include this in the strategy. It's not a department made up by people. No, it's part and parcel of the corporate strategy, how to attract and retain this talent. To start working with projects, and here the Hollywood metaphor is widely used. I have uh, the company, which is more or less the same, but each film is a different story. And the director, the catering company, um, the site manager. So I will hire specific teams, especially in innovation, so we compete more in the innovation sphere and not in the efficiency sphere. We need to be careful with the language. I was in an HR conference recently and I forced them not to say employee, but to talk about um, talent, people, people, collaborators, as the French say, collaborateurs. So people with whom we'll work, we will develop products and services, but stop thinking about them as employees. We do not own them. It's talent that we need and we will connect with. And if they are not employees, they will not be retained. So we need to attract them. We have to deserve them. And then new positions like the chief freelancing officer or the external workforce manager, as Erica had. And this cannot be um, sheer um, washing, so to speak, to look modern. So, conclusions now. I've shown the headlines. But what are the consequences? I'm a fast speaker and things change very rapidly too. So in this environment, we have to stop thinking about companies and think about ecosystems and organisations. That's the consequences that this has. Three phases here. Traditional approach. A company is a closed environment with talent inside. So there's a huge border between inside and outside, my talent and someone else's talent. So the organization is the addition of people and it's quite a hierarchical organization. If I start looking more like a Hollywood um, studio, well, I mix in-house and external talent. So the borders um, become more flexible and my organization is made up by talents and capacities and an in-house and external marketplace and projects that are dynamically organized. This is starting to happen in many organizations. Here the main challenge is the SME. Big corps are already doing it. Startups out of needs and survival are already doing it. But our main um, business fabric is made up by SMEs and that's where the challenge lies. And then talent, we do not own talent anymore. We belong to an ecosystem and we share talent with other organizations like the Hollywood um, metaphor, uh, photography director, a makeup um, person. So you do not belong to a studio and the ecosystem has to take care of that talent, has to train that talent. The problem is whether the talent goes and works for a different ecosystem, but not for a competitor of the same ecosystem. If you think this is very complicated, probably it's because we haven't really thought about the problem that has to be solved here. Professor Hal Gregerson says the following, choose a problem that is bigger than you, and then you need to make use of ecosystems. If we just pay taxes at the end of the year and uh, aim to have a green spreadsheet, okay, that's fine uh, as an organization. But I think that the Catalan 
business fabric has huge challenges lying ahead, Dem demography, the environment, um, the divides, the gaps. So which is the problem that is bigger than me and my organization that I want to help solving? So when we have this ultimate goal, then I will realize that I belong to an ecosystem and that talent has to be shared. And finally, I don't really know how I'm doing time-wise, This is a very peculiar um, time. We are between no more things with which we've been raised, um, narratives, legislations, um, ways of thinking, and not yet. Many of the things that I've presented here might sound odd. Um, we still don't have literature or good examples. That's where we stand today, between the no more and the not yet, which is uncomfortable in a way, but it's a way to, it's the right time to pose questions and um, set challenges and work on the regulation and the narratives. Hopefully I've helped you see where we are headed in the labor world. Thank you very much.